Welcome to PPU Expert. My name is Tom and I'll be presenting the Operational Procedures course. This course is designed to give you an in-depth understanding on the theory required to pass the CAA theory exam for this particular topic. Despite this, plenty of self-study, commitment and displacement will be required. The course is displayed in the form of a slideshow, which I'll be talking through. Please feel free to pause the recording at any point, either take a break or write down any notes. So the first topic we'll be looking at is the air traffic services. So the air traffic services is a blanket term which covers three main services that we have in the UK. Sometimes air traffic control uh, is used as a, as a generalization, but this is incorrect. Uh, we use the air traffic services which cover three main. So we have the air traffic control, the flight information service and the air ground service. So each aerodrome in the in the UK will cover one of these services if they're licensed, and we're going to go through all three, all three and uh, what that covers. So air traffic services and what their objectives are mainly to prevent collisions. So no matter what kind of uh, coverage they have, they want to maintain safety. So prevent collisions, expedite and maintain an orderly flow of traffic. So whether that's on the ground or in the air, provide advice information to all aircraft, no matter how big or small, and also notify other organizations of any issues, no terms, anything that could be a safety factor, the air traffic uh, services are there to help and assist us. So the first uh, service we're going to look at is the air traffic control service, which is the most common uh, with associated with larger airfields, and they're normally associated with a controlled airspace. And services are provided by an air traffic control officer who is specifically trained to give air traffic control uh, control and advisories. And it's divided into three types. So we have an aerodrome control tower. So that's a physical person in a tower on an airfield. And they uh, provide control for aircraft on the ground, taxiing, and aerodrome traffic, whether that's in the circuit or approaching to land. So within the visual range of the airfield, the aerodrome uh, control officer in the tower has control of this traffic. Next we have the approach control. So uh, this will provide control to aircraft that are within visual range of the airfield but uh, they can be seen on a radar which uh, is on the airfield. So the radar will pick up the traffic and the approach controller can see them on a screen and they will be able to provide information to them and assistance in any manner for this type of service. The last type uh, is the area control center. So very similar to the approach control, um, but they will provide air traffic control to on route traffic. So for traffic that is outside of the air traffic zone, so away from the airfield, and they will be coordinating traffic routing nearby the airfield from A to B, um, giving them airfield information or QNH settings or pressure settings, anything that's useful for tra traffic transiting nearby. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at the air traffic control uh, services and ATC call sign suffix, suffixes which are assigned with each um, station. So each station has a name uh, derived where it's from, so uh, the location that each service is located followed by what they're offering, so whether it's ground, so the first one uh, on the list is Birmingham, so that's the location, and then ground, so a ground controller um, offering uh, guidance and uh, control to aircraft solely on the ground. Then we have Birmingham Aerodrome Control, so this is the tower and there it's called Birmingham Tower. Again the suffix is the location first of all and the tower is um, what kind of control they're offering. Then we have a Cardiff Radar Approach, so again Cardiff's location and radar approach, so offering a service to aircraft that are not in the vicinity of an aerodrome uh, that are seen on a radar screen and they'll be known as radar so it's Cardiff radar. Heathrow approach control so Heathrow again the name approach control so if it's a busy radar they'll split the frequencies into approach and departure so we have aircraft coming into the aerodrome and we also have uh, aircraft leaving the aerodrome. So aircraft coming in will speak to approach and aircraft leaving will speak to departure. Um, so if it's a busy aerodrome you'll speak to one or the other like Heathrow. So Heathrow approach. 
The last one is Bryce Norton Control Zone. So uh, Bryce Norton, which is a military base, they have um, a military air traffic uh, uh, control area and um, it's a big controlled airspace but uh, the controller uh, controlling this area and you refer to it as a zone and so it'll be Bryce, the location and the zone. So you can see for each um, if each ATC uh, unit, there's a location and then there's the station that um, what's being provided, so whether that's ground, tower, radar, or one of the other ra uh, radar services or approach or zone. Um, yeah. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is the lower airspace radar service. So some radar equipped air traffic control units are able to offer a lower airspace radar service. Okay, so this will be for aircraft generally lower down, so below 10,000 feet. And because there's so much traffic, uh, they split it up, so the tra traffic controller can deal with aircraft lower down or if they're higher up. So they provide uh, traffic with radar-based traffic, so uh, they'll be able to see them on a screen and uh, they can give them information, whether that's Q&H information or they might be able to offer other traffic information. Um, so, such as a traffic service which we'll go into shortly uh, but it also depends on the controller workload so if they're not very busy they'll be able to offer more services than if they're very busy where it could be just a basic service. A list of uh, the services provided such as um, whether they can offer a basic or a traffic service uh, will be found in the AIP which is a document listing all the different stations in the UK and what um, what services they provide the aeronautical information publication so as an aircraft if we find ourselves outside controlled airspace whether that's an aerodrome or a controlled airspace up in the air we legally do not have to speak to a flight information service however it's strongly advised because they do offer us some good information and we're going to have a look at what kind of uh, services they can provide depending on what we require and what they can offer and the, and the base they're at and they're as follows so we've got a basic service they can be offered by air traffic control or flight information service a traffic service uh, so they will so the tra basic service will just give us um, just basic information like Q&H and the runway if it's uh, an aer aerodrome the traffic service will give us this information but it would also tell us if there's any traffic um, to be noted uh, but to, in order to do this it needs to be offered by a radar equipped air traffic control unit so they need to have a radar uh, to be able to see where we are and where other traffic traffic is next one's a deconfliction service so again it needs to be offered by a radar equipped service but it's only for IFR traffic so it won't be affecting us generally as uh, PPL students uh, but not only will they tell us where other traffic is, but they will also give us a heading and an altitude to fly to avoid this traffic at all times. And the lastly is a procedural service. And, and lastly is a procedural service offered by air traffic control to flight um, again in IFR. So if there's no radar uh, at an airfield, then they can offer a procedural service which will... Um, keep us clear of other traffic without being able to see them on a radar. So we're going to go in a little bit more detail now about each of those services and what they can provide. So the first one was a basic service. So this could be offered by nearly all 80 uh, S units, air traffic services. And this is the this is what they can offer us. So advice and information. So like regional pressure settings, uh, the wind where they are, um, anything to be aware of, like no TAMs or something like that. And it can be offered to both VFR and IFR traffic, but only in VMC, so visible meteorological conditions. Okay, so we have to be inside of the ground. Traffic information may be provided, but should not be expected. It's a basic service, so they're not obliged to tell us about any other traffic. But if they have the um, capability to do so, they will. Um, if they are a radar equipped uh, service, then they'll be able to see traffic. So if there's a collision looking like they, they, they may um, give us that information, but they're absolutely not obliged to. 
If there's no ra radar equipped, then again, they can tell us about other traffic from reporting positions, but they can't see it on the radar. But most of all, the pilot is responsible for the traffic and terrain clearance, so it's our responsibility. It's not the air traffic controller's responsibility to keep us away from terrain or traffic. So the next one we're going to look at is the traffic service. A traffic service is based on radar. So as I said before, to have a traffic service, it needs to be with a unit that has a radar um, and it has, which is normally from aerodromes with controlled airspace. So what they'll be able to do is we offer a traffic service. They'll also give us the basic information, but they'll be able to see us on the radar moving. And if they see us see any other traffic which is near to take effect, they can tell us um, where that traffic is so that we can avoid it. And again, it's offered to both VFR and IFR traffic. And the controller may provide headings and a level uh, as an advisory to avoid it, but they can't um, tell us where to go. It's ultimately the pilot's responsibility to avoid any collisions, not the controllers. Okay, so the next kind of service is called a deconfliction service. Okay, again, it needs a radar because it's radar derived information, and the controller will provide instructions to an aircraft to avoid traffic uh, by a specific margin. So they will give us a heading and an altitude to fly, and we have to fly it if we're under a deconfliction service. Okay, and those margins it will be five nautical miles horizontally away from traffic and 3,000 feet vertically. And again, it's passed in the form of a heading and an altitude, so they'll tell us what to fly. It's only offered to IFR traffic, so again, as PPL um, training aircraft and with PPL licenses, it won't really apply to us too much. Um, but if you chose to expand on your license, then it's something that you could look into. And the uh, aircraft must be identified by the controller before any service can be offered. Okay, so they need to see us on their radar screens and. Um, you might look later on in uh, offering a score code and an ident, so the controller needs to positively identify us as an aircraft, and that will be done by an ident and a score code, and then they can offer us this kind of service. Okay, so we've looked at the air traffic control, the first uh, the first type of the air traffic services. Now we're going to look at flight information service known as FIS. Okay, so small airports might have a flight information service, and effectively it's a lower, it's a downgrade in coverage. Uh, it's lower than air traffic control, um, and it's provided by a flight information service officer. Okay, so they have slightly less training uh, to an air traffic control, but they're still some kind of ATS unit. And what they can provide is positive control of uh, aircraft on the ground up to the runway holding point. Okay, so when we're on the ground taxiing, we're at um, we have to take instruction from a flight information service. They're in charge of us, so they'll tell us where to go. However, when we're in the air um, or just on the runway, it's actually our discretion. So it's up to us as pilots to make those decisions, and they can only advise. They can't uh, tell us what to do anymore. They obviously give us the air code information, like any air traffic control unit, such as the runway and the wind, um, so we know which runway to take off from and what the wind is for taking off at landing. They can give us non-radar based traffic information, so uh, they can give us traffic information based on uh, reports rather than seeing traffic on a radar screen, as they don't have this. And they'll be offering a basic service to aircraft, so flight information services do not don't have Okay, so the last one of the air traffic services is the air ground service, A slash G. Okay, so this is normally for much smaller local airports, air ground, and it's a very limited service. So it'll only provide us with the essential information. So they'll give us a wind, pressure setting, and the runway in use. Okay, and so it's delivered by a radio operator. They're not trained as an air traffic controller at all. All they are is trained on the radio to be able to provide pass information which they have received from their sensors and uh, equipment to judge the wind and the pressure. They can't provide any instructions or traffic information so it's always the pilot's uh, responsibility uh, 